going to do here is we're going to set up what we refer to in Northeast Florida as a float rig. It is nothing more than a slip float rig, meaning that you can adjust the depth of where you're going to put your bait. All right. It's stereotypically fished in current. This isn't a popping cork. I tell people we're going to fish with a float and they immediately think pop and cork. Pop and cork is for shallow water fishing only. But the funny thing is, is that I can take these floats and fish as effectively as a popping cork. And then 15 minutes from then, I can be fishing in 20 feet of water. So you'll see the versatility of this as we rig it. This is my preferred float. I know I'm going to get a ton of questions about it. Don't bother asking. I won't be going into all that kind of detail. This is a two ounce calibrated float. It's foam with a plastic covering over it. All right. This is calibrated that this two ounce sinker torpedo weight with a swivel on the end will pull this float that far underwater all right and only this will be sticking up where the color is doesn't matter here's a one ounce of a different shape that's just foam with no plastic covering over it or anything but what's similar is they both have holes on each end and the line just goes through it there's no clips there's no weights there's no nothing so we'll be concentrating on this float here. This is, like I said, a calibrated float for two ounces exactly. This two ounce weight, when we finish this rig, will pull this float that far underwater. And the reason you want it that way is for the sheer uh, stability factor. When this is drifting behind your boat, and it should always be drifting in current. And we have plenty of that here in Northeast Florida with our tides. So that'll be pulling this down and it'll be drifting along. All right, so you'll see more of that as we, as we go along in the rigging process. There is a rigging process that I have done that has as working out stupendously i mean it is absolutely fantastic that it's a no fail situation and that's all because i use 50 pound braid braid floats on the surface of the water like a floating fly line so when this floats and this floats everything is matching up everything's working in conjunction with each other first thing i do is i wet this a bit on the end and i'm going to put on a bead what's this first bead do this first bead will bump into a stopper knot which we will be tying on our line then the float bumps into the bead so now we're going to take the 50 pound braid and we're going to run it through the center of our float let me say that if you're using a styrofoam popping cork with the tube that runs through it it doesn't matter you've got to have a weight that pulls that that down just enough that the top of the cork would be sticking out of the water. So, after that, now we take another bead and we put it on the bottom. I wet this. And I put that bead on the bottom here. So now it's bead, float, bead. Okay? Bead, float, bead. Then I'm going to put on my 
float rigging, two ounce, what we refer to as a trout lead, torpedo sinker, whatever. Okay. Then the whole process basically goes where I am going to make what I call an insurance policy. And here on the bottom, I am going to take a length of line and double it. All right. I'm going to take a length of line and I'm doubling the braid. What I do then is I make a loop and this doesn't have to be fancy at all, folks. And what I do is I'm just going to make a loop and then run my end through it several times. Run through it several times. All right. And the reason I'm doing this is to create a big, fat stopper knot. Okay. So, when I pull this tight, there should be a big, fat stopper knot right there. Now, when my float comes down and hits the bead, the bead hits this stopper knot. All right. Now, what I'll do is, like I said, I call this the insurance policy. Now, I will take this doubled line, not the swivel end, just the end with the eye, and I will tie this float on, or this line on, leaving a loop above it. So, we take it, we tie on, don't ask me about knots, use the knots that you use, okay? Then there's a double line, okay, double line. What I would do then? Is I would come in and I would just trim the excess so here's what we got have our sinker insurance policy double line double strength Going to our bead, which hits this knot, and our float that hits this. So the entire thing now is this long. What does this also do? On here, the swivel end is where I would put a 20 pound mono leader. All right, but for transport, transport the nice thing about having this loop here is I run this over my reel handle and around the reel itself and tighten it up and what that does is it keeps everything down low so when it's sitting in a rod holder I don't have all these floats flapping in the wind getting tangled and Let's say you get your lead stuck in some rocks or something. What you have down here is double thickness and double strength. So we can hopefully pull this out of the rocks. And now that's why I call that the insurance policy. And then it also, if for some reason that this gets cut down here by the sinker, this knot right here brings our float back to the boat. That has happened many a times when we've lost our sinker, but that knot keeps this from just coming off and then drifting away with the current. This brings our float back to the boat. All right, so there's your entire rig. 
Now, people would say, okay, well, what, what's the deal with the leader and all that and the stop or not and all that? Well, I'm going to get to it. So there's your rig. You've got bead, sliding float, bead, double knot, double line to your two ounce egg or to your two ounce uh, trout lead. All right. So then we need a stopper knot, and you will not believe how many people do not know how to make a stopper knot. All right. With braid, you've got, you should always have your 20 pound test here. And that is our just plain mono that we're going to use for our, our leader. Well, you can also use this. You can also use it for your uh, making of a stopper knot. All right, so if I need to make a stopper knot, I don't have to buy them little packages of stopper knots. I got 20 pound test right here and I got braid. So I get myself a length of the 20 pound test. And I take it and I put it around, put it around my line, my braid. And I pinch it on the line. Grab it here. This is not normally how I would do this, so I'm trying to show you close-ups here. I would take it, and now I got a loop and two tag ends, and I would push this loop down, and all I'm gonna do is hold that loop. And I'm going to go through it. Go through the loop on one side. 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 All right? And then I draw it down. Oh, there we go. So now you've got your stopper knot. Draw that down real tight. And this knot now will slide back and forth. This knot will slide back and forth on your line. Now you take your tag ends and you always leave some because you want to be able to grip it. You want to be able to grip it and be able to move it. You slide it up your line. See? There you go. You slide it, slide it, and this is how you're now going to set your depth. We're not going to go into how to float rig fish. We're going into how to build the rig. So now wherever I set this stopper knot, my float will come up because of the weight pulling on it, and bam, it runs right into the end. This runs right through your guides, right into your reel, which should always be a bait casting reel, never spinning tackle. All right, and that is nothing more than a knot that if it loosens up, you can take these two tag ends and pull them tight, and that tightens it back up, and that's a stopper knot. You don't have to buy all this crap with these little tubes and all that stuff. That's for like super rookies, okay? You just make your own little stopper knot. And let me tell you, mono on top of the braid here with the stopper knot works fantastic. So that is the completed 
float rig. That is how I fish. That's how we catch all of our trout. Is with this rig right here. Now off of the sinker. Off of the sinker on the swivel end. I come back with about 30 inches of 20 pound test. 20 pound test. And I use a really small hook. I use like a number one hook. Uh, what works great too is like an eagle claw number four or number six wide bend. Because you're hooking your shrimp and you don't, your horn hooking your shrimp, and you don't want to use a huge hook that would weight them down. You want a shrimp that's about as long as your finger. And when you put the hook under the horn of the shrimp, you want him to be able to swim very free without the hook weighing that shrimp down. So off of here would be 30 inches of 20 pound mono and then my hook. And now as you can see, the entire thing, when it works in conjunction with its, uh, and its, its entire self here, is the fact that you're using a 20 pound leader, you got a 50 pound braid, that entire 20 pound leader that's tied to the hook, to the swivel down here on the end of your trout lead is totally sacrificial. Anytime that you get that stuck, you pop it, you break it, you bring it in, you either put on a new leader, or if your leader's still long enough, you just tie on another hook. So that's the float rig. That's how it's set up on my boat. I am highly successful fishing this. Now, here's when we get into this popping cork thing. Everybody thinks popping cork, popping cork. Popping corks, in my opinion, are one dimensional. All right, if I can fish this in three feet of water the same way I fish a popping cork, and that's called pegging it. What we do is we take the stopper knot and we draw it down right on top of our float. And now I take this entire thing and just fish it in three feet of water. All right, then the next spot we go to might be 23 feet of water, and I'm going to run this out. The stopper knot, I'm going to pull this stopper knot, and I'm going to make that, say, 21 feet. From the stopper knot to the hook, I'm going to make it, say, 21 feet. Okay? That'll put us in the range because we're, we're in 23 feet of water. Okay? And that is now super versatile. I have actually been fishing in 3 feet of water. And then move to 10 feet of water. We never change rigs. This does it all. I mean, you don't have to use popping corks. I use popping corks. I don't actually use popping corks. I use clip-on corks. But um, this can be used in all depths of water. All depths in Northeast Florida. This works out absolutely perfect having double line down here. And the, the, the one thing that I love about it is this is how I transport all my rods or all my float rigs. I slip this over the reel handle, over the top of the reel, tighten it down a little bit, and everything's down low and isn't, isn't getting blown with the wind. Alrighty, so that's a little bit of slip float fishing, float rig fishing, Northeast Florida 101. Thanks for watching.